I want to welcome you all to our sixth annual Palestine Advocacy Day. For six years now, we have been holding this important event in order to promote Palestinian rights and give them a voice. This year, we're virtual, and we have a record-breaking number of attendees and advocates trained and ready to advocate for racial justice at home and for justice in Palestine with their members of Congress. And it's been an honor to be part of Palestinian Advocacy Day. I've participated in the past, but this is my first virtual one. We can't meet in person, but it's heartening to know that American Muslims for Palestine still found a way for so many people from across the country to come together virtually. And on top of that, I understand that you have more than 100 congressional meetings set up already, including dozens with members of Congress, including myself. That is fantastic. We have almost 150 confirmed congressional meetings in on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. Over 20 of them are with members of Congress themselves. You are part of the largest and best organized advocacy day for Palestinian rights than I have ever seen. We are now live with American Muslim for Palestine's public plenary session for Palestine Advocacy Days. American Muslims for Palestine presents to Representative Betty McCollum, the Champion of Palestinian Rights Award. Thank you. Um, I'm very touched and very honored by, by the award. Thank you so much, but I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without your work, your advocacy, and um, the opportunity to, uh, to work together. With the strong support of AMP and dozens of faith-based organizations, human rights groups, and peace groups, I have been able to use my position to introduce two pieces of legislation that you are lobbying on today. And I want to really thank everybody for being here and being part of this extraordinary conference to highlight the many humanitarian needs that the Palestinians continue to face. Uh, you all know I won't waver. I know the truth about what happens in Palestine and I know the truth about what happens to our taxpayer dollars there. I have seen it firsthand and again, I cannot thank all of you enough for your incredible advocacy and, and your support. I learned that you cannot understand Israel without also understanding the occupation. Israel is not a democracy. Israel is an apartheid state that brutally suppresses the indigenous population of Palestine. Repression, economic stagnation, apartheid, is a system that the Palestinian people endure every day as they struggle under Israeli's military occupation. An oppression that is sadly supported by U.S. taxpayers' dollars, our dollars. There is something fundamentally wrong when we cannot find the money needed to provide clean water in my own home state of Michigan, but can pour billions into Israeli military where they expand an illegal apartheid system. Let us understand that the emerging access that we're seeing in the region of peace treaties between Israel and Egypt, Jordan, and now with the UAE and Bahrain normalizing relationships is a fundamentally anti-democratic access. But for those of us working for justice for all people, we will not be fooled by another sham Trump Netanyahu plan that has nothing to do with justice or peace for Palestinians or Israelis. And I dare anybody to try to draw the borders of what they call the Palestinian state. It's not a state. It's not even a mini state. It's not a statelet. It's a series of Bantustans under Israeli sovereignty and control. So let me be clear. I reject annexation. I condemn annexation. I was outraged when I saw Prime Minister Netanyahu's plan to annex parts of the West Bank. That's unacceptable. So I immediately signed a letter to Israel's leaders opposing this plan. And I was proud that I was joined by nearly 200 members of Congress. Talk is not enough. Tangible commitments and actions to help drive action and address these deep-seated issues are needed. I'm going to keep working with my colleagues in the Congress to ensure that these issues are addressed in a real, meaningful way. That's why I will continue working hard in Congress to address the mistreatment of Palestinians. This means changing U.S. policy to ensure our taxpayer dollars are not used to subsidize and legitimize Israel's violation of international law. As our country engages in an ongoing struggle for racial justice, we must remember that the fight for equality extends far beyond America's borders. 
for meaningful systemic change in U.S. foreign policy to occur, we must link the growing national movement for racial justice and police reform with calls to end racism in U.S. foreign policy. Put it really simply, the tactics and strategies that the U.S. and Israeli governments have used to suppress marginalized communities are strikingly similar. Both Israel and the U.S. use mass incarceration, racial profiling, surveillance, uh, and lethal force as forms of control. As Palestinians, Palestine activists, human rights advocates, we understand that only when we uplift and center connections between the struggle for Palestinian rights and the struggles for Black, Brown, Indigenous, and all communities and marginalized groups impacted by U.S. policies both within and outside of U.S. borders is when we will all rise is when we will all be free of persecution and when we will all breathe liberation. With our oppressors uniting, it's becoming increasingly clear that all our struggles for freedom are interconnected and that no one will be free until we are all free. Uh, we know that injustice against one of us is injustice against all of us and the injustice of this occupation weighs heavily upon the people of Palestine people like my beloved city. So as people of conscious, we need to continue to support organizations like AMP, grassroots organization, activists and operatives who continue to lead and shift lawmakers towards a rights-based, rights-first discourse on foreign policy that's inclusive of Palestine. The work American Muslims for Palestine and all Palestinian advocacy groups are doing has never been even more important. I also want to thank uh, American Muslims for Palestine because you are really uh, stepping in in a place where there has been not just vacuum, but distortions, labeling, Islamophobia, racism, xenophobia, uh, even anti-Semitism in an area where the Palestinian narrative was excluded, where the Palestinian reality was distorted. And uh, to be able to speak out in such a wonderful uh, company and, and an effective group is very important. The Palestinians are not in the habit of surrendering. Uh, we are not defeated. We may be under occupation. We may be suffering the worst type of torture and, and oppression. But in spirit, we are not defeated because we are a people with rights and we are a people who are determined to get these rights and to be free and to live in dignity on our own land. And I believe that Palestinian people deserve dignity, respect, justice and freedom. But the promotion of liberty and human dignity for Palestinians is nothing without your work. You show New Jersey and the country that Palestinians are committed to the ideals of democracy. The struggle for Palestine is a long-term one. It's not one event, it's not one conference, but it is actually the dedication of looking for the long-term and the changes that are we, we are witnessing in the United States. Public opinion is changing in your work, the BDS campaign, the AMP's advocacy days, and so many other efforts are having an impact Make no mistake about it. Palestine is at the center stage of political discourse in this country. Change needs vanguards. Justice needs people to speak for. And it is us that should be the vanguards for Palestine here in the U.S. And it is us who should be the voice for justice here in the U.S. We have to really make sure that 24-7 that Palestine is part and parcel of every action and every work that we do in order for us to bring that transformation that is needed. And it is dedicated to Palestinian Americans like you who keep this fight alive. In fact, it might be a member of your institute who makes that goal a reality. So there is nothing impossible here. Let us fulfill our destiny. This is our role. Bystanders or uh, spectators never write history, nor they pave the way for the future. Let us fight for our first amendment, for our constitutional rights, for our civil rights. We stand for BDS and we're not ashamed of it. This is a constitutional right. Yes, the constitution guarantees our rights. Yes, the declaration of independence guarantees our rights. Yes, we have rights that are supposedly guaranteed equality, liberty, justice, freedom, the pursuit of happiness. But let me tell you this, the history of this country tells us that these rights that are guaranteed 
in the, our own constitution are not given to us unless we demand them and we fight for them. And how do we fight for them? Through the system. How do we fight for them? Is by changing the public opinion. How do we fight for them? Is by applying pressure on our politicians. How do we fight for them? By saying and stand tall as Americans and say, look, we're not going to accept to be treated less or we're not going to accept to criminalize what we stand for in terms of justice and equality and freedom for the Palestinian people. But I will tell you, your attendance today, your participation, just by us holding this advocacy day, and it is you who made it a success. By committing to it, we have accomplished a lot. So thank you for being with us, and thanks for all who, those who participated. Again, thanks for the volunteers, thanks for the staff, and thanks for everyone. I want to give a very special thanks to the American Muslims uh, for Palestine for being such a fantastic partner and, and ally in the work that we do together. I just want to thank all of you so much, again, for always speaking truth to power. Um, and know that you have a partner in the United States Congress. Because of your tireless advocacy, we are making progress. Thank you and keep up the great work. Thank you for this timely work to organize and mobilize the power of American Muslims for a noble cause, for expanding and deepening American democracy, and for creating this opportunity to be part of a movement for freedom, justice, and equal rights for Palestine. Thank you so much, AMP, for not just creating such a powerful virtual um, events, but also for showing up in ways that a lot of organizations still have a lot of learning to do. And congratulations on your advocacy days.